Why should I care? And can I do this? And more importantly, do I trust you that you will really help me build that dream that you just sold me, right? So we can get all the facts. When people say, tell me about your company, tell me about facts.buy.com, tell me about your comp plan, break it down for me. That's a waste of time. Go to compland.buy.com. Give them the comp plan summary and say, check this out. The most important thing about recruiting and I mean, sometimes we'll take months or years to recruit people, is building that trust, building that relationship. Are you the person that they can attach their goals and dreams to? And are you the person that's gonna show them the way? Do you have what it takes to show them the way? And people care more about the people than they do about numbers. It's not the percentages on the comp plan, it's the behaviors. It's what, who you are as a person. So as a leader, uh, and you guys are all leaders in this room, care more about caring about people than knowing the comp plan. Yeah. Really excellent. Awesome. Oh, that was awesome. You know, to reiterate what um, Tar was saying a little bit about the relationship business, knowing what not to do is as important as knowing what to do. And you heard Rachel earlier, who a lot of you know, Rachel knows the internet. I know the internet. And a lot of people feel like the cure for everything is if I could just sign up everyone from the internet and sit behind my computer and all of a sudden sign everyone up. How many leaders in this room came in from being a lead? Any hands? Around, guys. Zero hands have gone up. How, are, how knowing that a lead does not turn into a leader are you going to try to generate leads to grow your business? been online for years, I've never seen a lead turn into a leader. Focus on what works, what works is what matters. This is a relationship business. Say you have a lead from someone out in, in Colorado, they don't want to talk to you, you don't know them, it's harder to build that relationship. Stay focused on what works, this is a relationship business, it's not a lead business. If you look, this, com this company has grown using a proven system. You want to constantly meet people, build those relationships, live the product, be the product. There's no better lead generator than you having a transformation on your own for your own people that you personally know. And the more that they see your transformation, the more you're going to have people coming. Remember, no means no now. One day someone's going to look in the mirror, they're going to say, today is the day that I want to change, and you've had the best change. I'm going to come to you for what you're doing. So keep touching people's lives with your transformation and see what happens over time. Awesome. 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 There you go. Super neat. Well, for me, it's uh, pretty simple. If you've met me before, you know I always compare building a network marketing business to uh, trying to date a girl. So I'm a guy. So uh, for women, you guys already have this down pat, and guys, you have to learn this stuff. Uh, women, you know when a guy's trying to approach you, you know what he should do, and you know what he shouldn't do. So if you just apply that to prospecting people, it's the exact same thing. For guys, same thing. When you when you meet a really uh, cute girl. The last thing you do is say, look, how many kids do you want to have with me, right? <laughs> the best thing I can tell you, if you really, really, really want to get this person, is don't do what everyone else does. So if you see a pretty girl, do you know what I do? I tell her how nice her shoes are. I tell her, look, you have really cool eyebrows. I do everything <laughs> opposite. And what most guys do, go, oh my god, you're so beautiful, right? Same thing in prospecting. You might want someone in your business, but I don't act like I want them or I need them in the business. And in fact, what I do is I tease people and they go, well, like, why don't you tell me what this is? So I'll give you an example. Something you can actually do right now when we're done uh, to launch your business for tomorrow. I would call my prospect and say, listen, you know what? I just found a way on how you can actually win $1,000. I'm still trying to get the details right now. I'll call you tomorrow once I get all the details. And you'll find people who are like, oh, okay. And the next day, they will actually call you Try to find out what did you find out more about this thousand dollar thing? Like, how does this thing actually work? That's my tip. That's awesome. And DD tips from Super Dave. <laughs> I love it. Hey guys, um, really quick, I, I like to uh, just, just make sure you're natural. Any salespeople here, do you guys know what ABC stands for in sales? Oh, always be closing, always be closing, and that's something that I kind of live by. Closing is a little bit harsh. Because um, you don't really want to feel like you're closing people. But what I like from that acronym is the fact that I always lead with the end in mind. Everything I say, I know what answer I'm trying to get them to say and where it's going. And everything I say is on purpose. Every post I make on Facebook, I never just blast out whatever's on the top of my mind. 
I choose every single word carefully because I know people are going to read it. When I tag or talk to other people or answer things for my people, I say it in a certain way. Um, if someone new on my team comes on board and they lost six pounds in their first week, I'll go on their Facebook and say, that is fantastic. I lost 65 pounds in my first 90 days, six pounds in my first week too. You're also on your way to doing the same. So what are people thinking when they read that? Without me bragging and boasting, I kind of am, but it's very subtle. One of my things is I like to be subtle. Um, another thing that's very important, it's a little bit salesy too, but uh, everyone's favorite radio station is WIIFM. What's, what's in it for me? And if you guys can really understand and feel and embody that and know that the challenge of what it can do for people and really offer it to them as a gift and say, oh, I'm going to sell another ESS and make $180 or $50 if you're just new, whatever it is, then it's going to work a lot better for you. Just keep in mind that... Uh, you know, what's in it for that person? A lot of you guys talk about, oh, this is Kevin, he's my five-star ambassador, and this is Dave, he, he did five-star ambassador. Before. They don't know what any of that stuff means. Lose the jargon, lose the terminology, think about your first day, how you heard things and stuff like that, and it's going to make a lot more sense. Just get really good at opening conversations with people, and, and things are going to go really good. Once you get natural at this, things will be better. The last thing I'll tell you, prove it to you, is uh, just recently I uh, sponsored someone at an ESS level, a cab driver, on a $6 cab fare. I see uh, Matt Jamison there. True or false, Matt? True! <laughs> $6 cab fare and we can sponsor something. You get natural at this and it doesn't feel like selling anymore and you're, and you're, and you're giving them a gift and you're going to do very, very well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Guys, and I'll end with this as we're going to be hearing from John Maxwell here this afternoon. You guys excited to come for John? Woo! You will not change your life until you change something you do every single day. So write it down right now. What is it that you're going to start to do every single day to become a master like every single person on this stage? Let's hear it for our panel again. Woo!